Hi, I'm John Hageman from JLL. Welcome to KNN. Today I'm here with Bob Knackle, and today we're gonna to talk about some of the most frequently asked questions from social media. So Bob, in our last episode, we talked about social media and how you've kind of jumped in feet first this year. Uh, and as a result of that, I know you've got a lot of interactions with a number of other commercial real estate professionals and aspiring brokers and active brokers, if you will. Uh, and a lot of them have a lot of questions for you. And some of those have, have been, you know, if you were to start today, you know, what would, what would you focus on and what are some of the lessons you've learned, you know, over that time frame? So yeah, Hags, the most frequently asked question I, I get uh, from brokers is if you could go back in time and, uh, and teach yourself uh, things that you know now that you didn't know back then, what would some of those mm -hmm. things be? And uh, it's interesting to think about. I think uh, clearly uh, specialization is a very important ingredient in that. Mm -hmm. uh, specialize on a product type uh, or a geography or a type of deal or something that will enable you to be able to articulate your value proposition very quickly, concisely, comprehensively. Mm -hmm. You know, why are you different than every other person out there trying to do what you do? What, what do you bring to the table? What, what value do you bring to a client? I think the more highly specialized you are, uh, the easier it is to show that you're different, mm -hmm. and that differentiation leads to a competitive advantage. I think that's a really, that's a major thing. So specialization, very clear. What's, what's another one that, to, that you would recommend to, to folks? So another thing that, that I would have done, I wish I had done from the very beginning, uh, and we've done for the past several years now, is to create case studies, a one-page case study on every transaction that we close. And this, my broker coach, Rod Santamassimo at the Massimo Group is a big proponent of this. Mm -hmm. uh, we put together for each transaction what we call a cart. C is for the challenge that we faced, write about the challenge. A is for the action that we took, mm -hmm. R, the results that we got, mm -hmm. and then T is a testimonial from the client. Mm -hmm. um, we've done that for several years now on our transactions. I wish we had done that you know, going back to the beginning mm -hmm. because those one-page testimonials are a great endorsement, particularly if you can get a testimonial from the client, and that's another thing I wish I did. Uh, you know, for the past several years, we've gotten testimonials from clients, but we never asked for those back in the early days. I wish I had them going all the way back. We have some, uh, sure. but not, not many. Um, and so I think putting these case studies together, and then over time, all of a sudden you have a whole book of these things. It's, it's a great way to show your experience, what you've done. Uh, it takes work, but everything takes work. So, you know, those, that I wish that we had done those from the very beginning as well. Give us a few more examples. Um, one other thing I wish I had done earlier on is uh, asked people a lot of questions, people who I looked up to and admired in the business. Uh, should have asked more questions. Uh, we did so many things by trial and error. We made thousands of mistakes. Fortunately, we didn't make a lot of those mistakes twice, but uh, asking questions uh, would have helped us avoid a lot of those mistakes. Another thing, read more. Uh, I started after several years in the business, I started to read more, I wanted to learn more, um, and became very uh, inquisitive. But I, I think to have started to read and understand the market from early on mm -hmm. uh, would have been a great thing. Uh, I think what became apparent over the years is that the most frequently asked question you were going to get is, how's the market? Um, and for many, many years, I've been answering that question with statistics rather than adjectives. Overwhelmingly, people answer with adjectives. I wish I had been using stats earlier on. I think uh, it would have been better for my career in the early days to, uh, to really demonstrate a command over the, uh, the marketplace that way. Um, so those are things I, you know, I, I wish that we had done uh, right from the beginning. You've gone over a number of things. What, what, just give us a couple more maybe for, for, for the viewers. Oh gosh, you know, Hags, I could go on forever I know with you this, could, but, but uh, you know, I think um, focusing on public speaking is a very important thing. Um, I was petrified of public speaking early in my career and just through, uh, through doing it a lot, um, I overcame my, my fear, but I wish I had proactively taken a public speaking class or something like that. It would help you not only speaking in public at, at conferences and things like that, but also, if you think about it, we're public speaking when we give pitches, mm -hmm. when we give presentations to clients. Sure. So I think public speaking acumen is very important. 
Um, another thing I would have done is, is develop relationships with the press from the very beginning. That's something that developed over time. Uh, but the best thing that can happen for you in terms of market presence is there's a, an article about your market and you're quoted. Uh, if you're quoted in that article, you're perceived to be an expert in that area. Uh, people will become familiar with you who might not know you. Mm -hmm. It's very, very effective in terms of promoting market presence to know the press, but you have to proactively go out and engage with the press. Um, and you know, reporters, their number one job is to write about what's going on in the market. Uh, I, I write a column, as you know, for The Observer. The most difficult thing is figuring out what to write about. Mm -hmm. So to the extent that you go to the press and you say, hey, you, you may not be aware, but this is a trend that's happening today, they love that because that gives them something to write about and mm -hmm. then you hopefully can get quoted in that article. But uh, engagement with the press is something that I think is very important also for young folks. Any last words of wisdom? No, I think... Um, I would say that uh, over-communicating with clients is much better than under-communicating with them. Uh, there's always that moment where a transaction might not be going that well, uh, or you don't have a lot of activity, the phone rings, you see it's the client calling, and you freeze, and you're like, oh no, do I take this call? And take the call, have something to say, be proactive about communicating with them, over-communicate. Uh, much better to call a client and say, hey, just want to let you know nothing's going on, Rather than have them call you, you pick up and have to answer that nothing's going on. So I think over-communication is, uh, is a big one. Um, and another thing that I've come to learn over the years, uh, which is a big one, I think when you meet with a client, you should know everything about their portfolio before meeting with them. Uh, it's so much a different conversation when you go to a client and if you said, hey, anything in the portfolio you're thinking about selling today? And no, no, not really, as, as opposed to going and saying, hey, what about 123 Main? Uh, you've had that for a long time. I see, you know, next door they're building a new building. You just put a new tenant in there. Any chance you might want to move that one? And all of a sudden you get into a conversation about that. Oh, no, no, I have plans. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Uh, and then you talk about, well, what about uh, 234 First Street? Mm -hmm. And uh, you start talking about that one. And all of a sudden... You, you, you're getting quality information, you're finding out more about what their objectives are, the way they look at things, it, and it puts the relationship on a much different basis. So I wish I had done that from the very beginning also. But, um, you know, so many different things to focus on. Again, we could go on and on for a long time, but those are some of the things that immediately come to mind when you say, if I could go back and, and talk to my 21-year-old self when I was starting in the business, what I would say would be, you know, focus on those things.